for everything that you've done. And if you have not set him first, what you say? Lord, I was busy. I thought when I retired, who promised you retirement? And we often, it's amazing how life is. As I get older, numbers seem younger. I recall when 25 seem old. 50 seem old. He almost young. That's right. That's right. <laughs> 80, bless you. 88 is what? Is young? It's not old. Bless you. 88 ain't even old no more. I want you to realize God said you robbed me. Secondly, God says, bring me back all that's mine. And the third concept inside this text, let's reveal just about it. Give me a test. Yeah. Verse 10. Verse 10 again. He says this. Bring all the tithes to the storehouse. That there may be food in my house and Test me. God says, and test me. God says, test me. Get this. God says, you robbed me. You took from me what was rightfully mine. That child you have, ain't yours. Right. Should give back to God. Right. That mate you have, it's not yours. Right. Give back to God. Those things you have, they're not yours. Give them back to God. The job you have, the folk on the job, your friends, they're not yours. You got to give them all back to God. God said, I want you to know that you robbed me all the stuff that I'm right to. You robbed me of what's mine. Here's you know what God said. You robbed me of what's mine. And so what I'm going to do, since you robbed me, I'm going to give you more. Now, that don't make crazy sense. God said, you've robbed me. But I want you to learn what it means to trust me. And the only way I can get you to learn what it means to trust me is to declare to you that I will give you again. And when I give you again, I want you to take it and give it back to me. And just to prove I can be trusted, I'll take what you give me and I'll bless you with more. Because I want you to know the value of what it means to set me first. He wants you to learn what it means to put him first. And you can't learn that lesson unless you let him bless you by setting first. So we only get the best of your time. Here Sunday. Yeah, man, you know. I'm awful. That's my day off. I don't know about you. I recall the story of a, told of a man whose house caught fire. And, and when the house caught fire, a neighbor ran up to the house and, and ran inside and got the man's children and family out the house and ran back inside to check and make sure everybody was out and the, the roof fell on him and he died. And the story said that at the memorial service, the family who was rescued didn't even show up. Oh. Isn't that terrible? Yeah. Isn't that disrespectful? Yeah. Isn't that ugly? Yeah. Every Sunday you don't worship God, that's what you do. Yeah. He died for you. Yeah. And you didn't even show up again to say thank you. It was once, it was worth a one thank you. I ain't going to be saying thank you. Yeah. God looks at your giving <laughs> of all of your life to him. It's your way of saying thank you. And I don't know about you, but I can declare, I, I, I'm from the country, bro. I, I, I can declare that I've had so many blessings. If God don't bless me another blessing for the rest of my life, I owe him. I owe him for my salvation. I owe him for my help. I, I, I owe him for giving this for I am faithful. I have blessed, and I know I'm blessed. Amen. I am so I would never hold back or I would give up. I will wear myself out for the Lord. Because I know how blessed I am. If you know how blessed you are, there's an old song we sing about God will open, God will open the windows of heaven. And Pull you out of blessing, God will open. That's all right. I'm awful, I'm awful. <laughs> I want you to realize that you got to begin by trusting him right now. 
that you can't be no better without doing something different in your life. That someone's been on a path on the wrong road for so long that you don't even know how to turn around. And, and I pray because some of us, some of us were blessed. I, I, I would declare I was blessed to have a, a godly father Amen. who set an example that blessed me so I could learn how to set a good example for my kids. I was blessed. Everybody ain't had that. I was blessed to have a mother who tried to learn, who, who tried to worship God and, and set God first in our family. I will, everybody ain't had that. There are some folk up in here who didn't have access to anybody in front of you who was godly. And the only example you've ever seen is folk who have no idea of God. I pray for you because you have no idea of the necessity of a foundation. But you've got to understand that if you don't change the pattern of your family or the curse inside your life, you will be the cycle that will curse your kids by the same curse your life has been through. You've got to begin the process of change. If you don't change, you'll be stuck where you are. i got to close. I, I watched Animal Channel sometime and I was watching... I was watching uh, how these eagles with uh, baby alligators being snatched up by eagles and, and understanding the necessity that, you, that, that, that the difference in mankind and every other creature that exists is that you have the power to choose. Yeah. That's right. mm. hey. you, you have no idea how powerful that gift is. Yes. You, you have a power. You know, I ain't got no choice. I was ready. I was from the hood. That's how we do. You do me, I do you. You with me, I'm with you. You not, I'm not with you. You cross your eyes, I bounce on you. That might be the wrong term. Bro. You can choose. You're not stuck. You can make a different decision. You can decide right now. Time. Tell me, you been tired before? Huh? You been tired before? Yeah. Have you been tired before? Oh man, I'm tired now. Bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you. You ever been tired before? You ever had choice in life that just put you down the wrong path so long? Just get tired, man. I'm just sick of being stuck. Unable to get up to go far, just sick of being in a rut. Yeah. Can't build, can't grow, just, just stuck. Tired of being stuck. You ain't gotta be stuck. You can choose now. But the dilemma to become a child of God means you gotta choose to die. You gotta choose to die to who you were, right. to what you have been, yeah. to what you've gone through, to come alive to something different. And it's the kind of a walk you don't just say, I'm gonna come forward and I'm gonna accept Jesus. And woo! Woo! I got Jesus! I got and walk out and man, you can't do this all by yourself. That's right. You get the Lord and walk out of here, we don't see it no more. You're going to go right back to the garbage you came up out of. Any pee cleaned up, drop back in the slump, go right back where it came from. If you want something different, you got to make a decision for change and connect with some folks can help you in the change. Where is God's gift? I ain't talking about a Christmas present. The gift he wants is you. You don't want your stuff. He wants you. Because if he gets you, he gets everything. And the beauty about that, he'll take everything and say, I'm glad you realize it came from me and give it right back to you. And said, I want you to handle that stuff like you understand the nothing you have belong to you. But they did me wrong. You need to forgive them because they don't belong to you. It ain't yours anyway. They took my money. They ain't paying me back. Baby, you are that. It wasn't your money in the first place. They got some stuff right now. Some of you right now, before the year's over, you got to clear some stuff off your pattern. You got to let some stuff go. I don't care if it's money. They stole my car. It don't matter what happened. You got to let some junk go. You can, if you're going to be healthy, you got to realize that as a steward that belongs to the Lord, I can't drag into 2014 the same mess I found in 13. I got to leave some stuff behind. 
and let God change me so I can have the kind of spirit that can be a blessing and stop living a life that makes me a curse. Let some stuff go. Because all nothing belongs to you. Let God forgive you and make you better. But if you're not a Christian, if you're not a Christian, I don't know how you made it. But the devil ain't playing no games. People are dying every day. The, the murder, the homicide rate in Indianapolis is higher this year than the last, I think, six or seven years. Folk killing folk for no reason. And they ain't through. You can be shocked that the folk will shoot you for, for $10 in your pocket. They shoot you for a cheap phone. All of my iPhones ain't expensive, y'all. They got cheap iPhones out there. They got they no memory on it, just a little pretty looking little phone. Folk will shoot you for a $25 phone. And you lost your life over junk. If you don't know the Lord, you gotta come. But the Bible is so simple. It's so simple. You would actually need help to misread scripture. Even if you want to be saved, if you want to be saved. The, the world is crazy because the devil has, got, has done such a good job. He's got folk lying about salvation. Yeah, folk lie. People will tell you, well, you want to be, all you got to do, you want to be saved, just come and say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, I receive you into my heart right now. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Just say a sinner's prayer and God will save you. And that's amazing. Folk will say that and you can't find a word of that in your life. How can you tell somebody a sinner's prayer is going to save them if God didn't say that? Well, I just don't think that other stuff is important. Well, who are you? Are you saving somebody? <laughs> the Bible is clear. If you want to be saved, you must, you must, you must do God's work, God's way. Amen. How do you get saved? Well, just tarry for the Spirit. We got to just come get on your knees and tarry until the Spirit hits you. The Bible never told you to tarry for no Spirit to hit you. How can that save you? If God didn't say it, where it come from? I got a friend of mine who was preaching in the North, Rocky Mountain, North Carolina, and he he, uh, he worked at Walmart. And he, he, uh, he, he talked to a girl on the job. He said, he said, listen, could you? He said, could you help me with something? She said, sure. He said, you know, I heard about the uh, 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 preacher was talking about about uh, saying the sinner's prayer. He said, could, I can't find that. Could you ask your preacher where it is? She said, well, sure. So she talked to a preacher. A preacher said, I'll get it for you. And so a few weeks passed. He said, walking on the job every day with her. He said, your preacher got that text. She said, well, no, he won't get it from me. So another month passed. He said, well, your preacher got that text. No, he said, he's been busy. He ain't found it that he won't get to it for me. That's so what about two months in. He said, I, 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 I'll be messing with you. He said, yeah, it, it, it ain't in the Bible. He said, but you're not in the Bible. He said, it's not in the Bible. So how, well, how, but the pastor told me all I do is say a sinner's prayer, and I got saved. That's how I got saved. I said a sinner's prayer, and I got saved. I got, I got baptized later after that church, but I've been saved for a long time. How can I read the Bible? She said, where it come from? He said, I don't know where it come from, but I know where it didn't come from. How does a person get saved? Let me give you something to read on your own. The Bible says, Romans 10, 17, faith that saves comes from hearing what? The word. If you can't read it, you can't trust it. But our pastor, the pastor was so sincere. Maybe other pastor got a heaven and hell, you in trouble. The Bible says, Hebrews 11, chapter, verse number 6, Hebrews chapter 11, and verse 6, without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must be that he is, and that rewards those who diligently seek him. You've got to come to the Lord with a diligent search inside of his word. If it ain't in here, you can't trust it. And then the Bible says, Acts chapter 17, verse number 30, Acts 17 and verse 30, it said, Luke records the words of Paul. He said, at one time, God overlooked ignorance. But now he commands all men everywhere to repent. Repentance is a change of mind. We must have faith, that's to believe, and have a change of mind. A change of mind that says, I'm going to do things differently, stop doing things my way, and start doing things God's way. That's a change of mind. And once you have repented, change your mind. The Bible says, Matthew chapter 10, verse 32, Jesus himself said, Wherefore, whosoever should confess before men, he will also confess before my Father, which is in heaven. He said, You confess that you know me now, I'll confess that I know you later. You gotta understand before this audience and declare, I believe that Jesus is the Christ, He's the Son of the living God. That's your confession. Amen. 